We are related. We are connected. For the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Together we do as part. The topic today is going to be the power of Christ. What's the power of Christ? The rebirth of a new man in you. I just want to say a short prayer before we get into this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for giving me the privilege to be able to stand here and minister your word. For you're a great God, you're awesome God, your power is marvelous. In Jesus' name. The Christ, the power of Christ. The power of Christ is a rebirth of Christ. It is a new man in you. The Bible makes us so understand that in, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, Christ said, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an open show of them. He disgraced them. He disgraced them totally. That means nothing in this world can stop you from making your destiny. Nothing in this world can stop you. Not even Satan can stop you. The Christ has given us a privilege to be called sons, not because we deserve to be called sons, but it is by divine favor. We have been favored by God to be called sons. We have been favored by God to partake in His awesome presence. We are God's carriers. We inherit the kingdom of God. We only inherit the kingdom of Satan. So the power of Christ has led much in you. The power of Christ starts from the cross. Christ went to the cross. He defeated Satan. He defeated condemnation. With no doubt, he trusts guilt. Guilt, doubt, misery, sorrow, everything. He he also brought to the lamb like he also brought out the best in us. When he died, he, he went to the grave. That was when he trashed out sin. He trashed out sin. Sin is a spiritual issue. It's not a physical thing you see like condemnation. Sin is a spiritual issue. In the very beginning of the war, sin was treated. Um Satan was trying to measure up with God and by so doing he fell from God's power so God cast him down to the earth so but he became jealous of man he became jealous of man seeing the power God invested on man because God made everything but the seed that he created man for his purpose when he created man he said I've given you power to rule everything the land, the seas, the fish and the sky everything you see is under your feet to control so in Satan's eye he was being jealous so when he was so in his, his greed and envy, he came and he and he spoke words to to the weaker vessel, and she now lured her husband into it, and they both fell in sin. So sin did not start actually from Adam. Sin actually started from Satan itself, from the original of the world. That's why the Bible says that in the beginning was a world, and the world was filled with darkness. The world was void and empty because of Satan's sin. It was a spiritual issue. So now, let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 24. It says that, that, that the, the only one who had the power to forgive sin is Christ and Him alone. There is nothing more, nothing less to this gospel. Who on earth has the power to forgive sins? Not even a truck pusher, not even a thief, nobody. Even the Barabbas, he claimed that, that he was a perfect man. I bet you he wasn't. He wasn't at all the perfect man. Barabbas wasn't a perfect man at all. But Christ was a perfect man, but he was accused for us. So when he was killed on the cross, he blocked out your transgression, guilt, condemnation, doubt, addiction, failure, sorrow, everything that has to do with, with negativity. He was pulled out, his flesh was pulled out. Everything about him left his body because of the power in him. He could carry our burden. Everything is saying, like in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible says that for those who are in Christ are no longer condemned. But those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit of God. So sin is dead and the law is dead. And therefore, God's beloved son to die for you and me. So we may have a new life. So the power of Christ is all about the resurrected life. The God kind of life. The very kind of life of God. The best you ever need in life. There is nothing more to this. No, nothing more to that. So I want you to take your time to see that the gospel... Of Christ is all about his power his strength it took God his omnipotence to create a new person in you that is why we say that when Christ resurrected you became the new man Christ became a born again while he trashed it down from hell Christ became a born again why he sucked Lucifer out of your life 
behold the Bible says that behold I have the key of hell the key of hell is upon is with me I've, I can't give you life a life more abundantly you see so this is what I am saying here the power of Christ is all about what is all about his marvelous riches his marvelous favor there is nothing on earth that you have to believe on except for the power of Christ this is the power of the gospel the gospel is all about knowing who Christ is all about who is Christ Christ is Christ is your testimony your testimony is not your mother or your father Christ is your testimony you don't reach yourself you read Christ Christ you Christ is being is being read in you everything about you is Christ so I want you to take your time to see that Christ is the author and finish of your faith. Christ is the beginning and the end in you. There is nothing more out of Christ. You have to take this time to understand that you are a perfect person in Christ. With the power of Christ, you can do everything. The Bible makes it clear again for us to understand that in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, that He has given us power to trample over lions and scorpions. What is that power? Authority to break down kingdoms, authority to challenge spiritual forces, authority to stand and speak the truth, authority to do everything. The Bible makes it clear for us to see that let every man be a liar and God be true. We all are sin and fell from God's power, but, but we have been transgressed, but we have been redeemed by His blood. We have been given the God kind of life. We have been given the new kind of life in us. So, in, so in, all in all, there is nothing out of the gospel. So the gospel is all about Christ and His finished works. I bet you my brothers and sisters, you just need to lay your life on Christ. Because seeing that He died for you, you won't bother yourself. You won't say, no, I need something extra. You won't try to dominate yourself, but you will know that you don't compete with one another. You, you, you only abide in Christ because He is in you and you are in Him. He is in you and you are in Him. You have to see this as a perfect thing. You have to see it as a perfect thing. You are in Him and He is in you. So, there is nothing that will ever make you have a change of mind. You are not a condemned person. God has been condemned. You remember, you have been redeemed. You were born with a price. The Bible says that He bought you with a glorious price. He bought you for a noble purpose. He didn't bought you with His loins. He didn't bought you. He bought you with a noble purpose. The Bible makes us to understand that we are not born of man, that we are born of Christ, of the Spirit of Christ in us. And the Bible makes us to understand that we carry this, the promise of God to the seal of the Holy Spirit in us, the seal, a coverage that nobody can break into the power of Christ. The power of Christ has brought salvation, redemption, newness, sonship, authority, everything that you can ever imagine. This is the gospel. The gospel is all about what? Love, mercy, power, glory. And every and 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 uh, favor. So you're watching this. You just you just have to you just have to know that you are the best thing on earth. You are the best thing that God ever has. There's no two of you. You're the apple of God's eyes. This is a power. This is a power that Christ has invested in you. This is a power that you have to work on. And now, I want to take this time. And now, I want to take this time to clearly demonstrate on something. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. John the Baptist, when he saw the Master, the Master approached him. He said, no, I am not worried to untie your sandals. How do you want me to do this? It's impossible. He said, no, you have to baptize me. So John the Baptist ushered Christ into the realm of immortality. John actually did it with, with his mortal hands. When Christ was baptized, sin came upon Christ. Oh, he became a sinner. When he was born without original sin, his incarnation is without sin. He was born without sin. He died without sin. But when he was baptized, sin came upon him. When he came upon him, that's when he was betrayed. He was betrayed not because of wickedness, but it was because of me and you. He was betrayed because of the noble glory our Father in Heaven had for us. So, all in all, Christ be the superb in everything. Christ is a master. Christ is everything. Christ is a call to our lives. Christ is a everything to, to our lives. When he when he was baptized, he he was killed. That's that's he died and he arose again. When he arose again, he arose with power. He had the power to judge everything. Behold, the Bible says that you have the power to judge everything, and the everything can never judge you. For when God made the world. On the sixth day, he made man and he rested. 
So everything cannot judge you, but you can judge because you have a power that Christ has given you to rule, to judge, and to plan and to uproot. So you, you have the utmost best in you to recreate everything as you want it to be in your life. Be it your education, your career, your destiny, your life, just to name it. That's what you can do. That's what Christ can do for your life. Before any segment, I want to do a recap of the power of Christ. What's the power of Christ? The power of Christ is a new recreational spirit in you that Christ has given you to manifest His glory. And if you don't have this Christ in you, you are going nowhere in life. Except, except you accept Christ in you. That is when you can enjoy the blessings and the riches and the glory of God. But if you don't accept Christ in you, you are going nowhere. So you have to see Christ as your all in all. You have to see Christ as your beneficiary. Christ is your benevolence. Christ is your everything. So you don't have to seek for some other means or ways of doing things. It's only Christ. You have to know that Christ has given you the power to take, to withhold, to plant, and to uproot, to command whatever thing you want to command. So everything is under your care and everything is, is with you. So if you haven't accepted Christ, I want you to say a short prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I need you today. Come and take your place in me. I humbly come to your presence this day. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. I dwell in your, I dwell in your presence as from today. I am, I am born again. The power of Christ in me. I have a new spirit of Christ in me. So I am transformed. I am a new person. I, I have a God kind of life. I am a life giving spirit to all. With me, you know, you are a short candidate of prosperity, success, favor, greatness, and you can never be sick. But it says those who are on Mount Zion can never be sick, can never say they are poor, can never say they, they have depression, but they will say they are complete in Christ, for you are perfect in Christ. We Stay tuned. See you next time. I am. For the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, together we'll do as parts. We are related. I am. We are connected. For the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, together we'll do as parts. Gospel and media. You're right.